Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, in the last video, we saw how to grab JSON data, loop through that data, and then log it to the console. Now, that's fine and good, uh, but in that situation, all of the JSON uh, was within the same file that we were using to write our code, uh, which makes accessing it super easy. But in a real situation, um, like when we build our WebEx app, it's going to be on a separate server, so we're going to need uh, to do a bit more in order to get to it. Now, before we even talk about grabbing JSON from a server, though, we need to learn how to get it from a separate file. So that's what we're going to be focusing on here today. Now, there are several ways that you can do that. In fact, uh, there are several libraries out there that can make the whole process a lot easier. But again, I I'm not going to use any of that in this project because I think it's important for you to see sort of the nuts and bolts of how all of this works. And it'll make a lot more sense to you if we just use vanilla JavaScript. So uh, we're going to use the Fetch API to do that, to make our request here. And then uh, to sort of finish things off, I'll go ahead and show you how to then uh, display the data on the page. And hopefully by the end, it'll be a lot easier to see how this app is going to come together. OK, so I'm in VS Code here, and I've got a folder here called Fetch. And uh, inside this folder, I've got a file called heroes.json. So what I did is I just copied the same superheroes array that we created in the last video. So if you haven't seen that, uh, you should go ahead and check it out. And then I just uh, pasted that in here into the separate file. So all of that data is exactly the same as before. I didn't change anything. I just moved it here. So we'll go ahead and save that and close that out. We don't need that anymore. And then I also have an HTML file called index.html. And just as before, we can set some boilerplate code here by typing an exclamation and then tab. And let's go ahead and title this fetch uh, example. And we'll save that. Then we'll right click to open up live server. And then I'm also going to go ahead and open up the console so that we can see our output. OK. So to start, we're going to add a button so that whenever we click it, uh, it'll get the data from our local file that we just created. So to do that, uh, we'll say button and uh, give it an ID of get heroes. And we'll say the same, get heroes. Then we're going to add a line break and then put in a div tag here. And uh, we'll, give it, we'll give that an ID of output. Now we're going to leave this div empty because the content here is going to be generated dynamically based on the output ID that we just gave it. Uh, and if that doesn't make uh, any sense to you, it'll be a little bit more clear a little bit later. OK, and that's all of the HTML that we need to do for this. Uh, then we'll come down here just before the closing body tag, and we'll go ahead and add our script tags just as before. Now, since we have a button, uh, we need to add an event listener so it knows when the button's been clicked. So we'll say document.getElementById, and we'll call the ID we just gave our button getHeroes, and then we'll add our event listener. And we'll want to listen for a click event. And then we'll call a function called getHeroes. OK, so let's go ahead and write our function. We'll say function getHeroes. And then to make sure everything's working OK so far, we'll console log that. And we'll just say button works, if I can spell that right. And uh, let me align this a little bit better. OK. OK, I'll save that and then click the button. And we get button works. OK, so far so good. Now what we want to do is uh, fetch our JSON data from the external file that we created, uh, heroes.json. So let's delete that. And then we'll call the fetch function. And then this function is going to take a parameter. Now, if our data is on a server, it's going to be a URL. But since the file is local, it's just going to be heroes.json. That's a file we saved earlier. OK, so when you use fetch, it returns a promise. Now, without going too deep into it, a promise is just as the name suggests. It's, it's a promise to return a response that we're going to get asynchronously. Now, when we use uh, promises, we use dot then. And the then takes a function, OK? And uh, then within our function, we want to pass our response. Now, you can put response here, or some people just say res. Uh, it doesn't matter either way. And then we'll console log that response to see where we're at so far. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and save that, click our button, and then we get the response. So we can see here, uh, we get the status, the 200 OK, the type, uh, the URL, and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of useful information here, um, but let's go ahead and let's change this to res.json, and then we'll save that. And uh, now we can see the value of the promise, which is also useful, but uh, what we really want is the JSON data that's inside the response. So what we can do here is go ahead and return the response. Ah, okay, I can't seem to spell very well today. Uh, that should be return. And then we can add another dot then. And just as before, it's going to take in a function, and this function is going to give us the data that we need. So we'll pass in data here. And then just to sort of check where we are, let's go ahead and console log that. We'll save it, click the button, and now we're getting our superheroes array just like in the previous video. And then remember, if we want, we can access individual objects. So data.superheroes and then a pair of square brackets. And then we want to put the number of whatever superhero we want. So if we want the second object, we have to put in one because remember, uh, arrays are zero based. And then if we want the first name or whatever, we can add that here, save that, click the button, and then we get Iceman. Okay, so just as before, let's go ahead and create our loop. So uh, first we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And then we'll say uh, four, and then i to zero, and so long as i is less than the length of our array, we'll increment by one. Okay. Now in the last video, we just logged everything to the console, but here I wanna show you how to display it on the page. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's go outside of our loop. Let's go up here and we're gonna create an output variable and then we're just going to set it to empty. And then let's go back inside our loop and append to our output variable. Uh, each time we loop through the array, we can do that with uh, plus equals. Now we're going to set a pair of back ticks. Now, very important, these aren't single quotes. These are back ticks. These are right by the uh, number one button up in the top left-hand corner of your, your keyboard. Okay, now basically these back ticks are going to allow us to drop in some HTML without having to concatenate with quotes and pluses and all that uh, sort of cumbersome syntax. So uh, let's first add an H3 tag here. And, and inside I'm going to say name. And then I can use a dollar sign and then two curly brackets and then our closing H3 tag. And then inside these curly brackets, this is where we can insert our variables. So this is just like when we were sending our output to the console. We'll start with uh, data.superheroes and then a pair of square brackets. And then inside the brackets, we'll iterate through each object with the i variable. And then uh, the first thing we want to do is display the superhero's name as the main title. So we'll say dot hero name. Okay, and then let's just go ahead to make this a little bit easier. Let's just copy and paste that a few more times. And good, that'll work. And then we're gonna change these H3 tags to list tags, so. Okay, and then we'll change name to first name, and then last name and age. And we'll want to change the first name here as well uh, and last name and finally age. And then to sort of finish things up here, we'll just enclose the whole thing in some UL tags. And we're almost there, uh, but then one last thing that we need to do is go outside of the loop down here and uh, then we're gonna output everything to that empty div tag that we created at the beginning of the video. So remember, uh, we created this div tag and then left it empty for our output. So then we're gonna come back down here and uh, again, outside of the loop, uh, we'll say document.getElementById 
And then remember our ID of our div tag up here was output. And then we'll say inner HTML is equal to the output variable that we're looping through within our get heroes function. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And then we'll click our button. And uh, hmm, looks like I've got an error here. Undefined is not an object. Oh, uh, oops, uh, that should be superheroes, not superhero. Okay, we'll say that one more time. Click the button and cross our fingers. And then there's our superheroes data displayed up on the page. Now, of course, this looks pretty ugly because, you know, we haven't styled it with any CSS or anything, but, but we could. Um, we could build a really nice interface and make it look much better, but uh, that's, you know, that's what we have for now. Okay, so we know how to grab our JSON from a separate file. Uh, so then the next thing that we need to do is learn how to grab it from a separate server. And that's gonna require a couple extra steps uh, because it involves authentication. So for that, uh, I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.